let's talk about how stroke is related to AF and how you can reduce your risk of stroke. People who have atrial fibrillation can have a three to five times greater risk of having a stroke. It is estimated that 20% of all strokes are caused by AF. In addition, the types of strokes that are caused by AF have a tendency to be of a more serious nature. The good news in all of that is most strokes caused by AF can be prevented. Let's explore the reason for why AF can increase your risk of stroke. When the heart rhythm is irregular, it can cause blood to pool or collect in the atria, and as a result, it can form a clot. These clots can dislodge and then travel throughout the circulatory system and into the arteries that supply the brain, blocking the blood supply and causing a stroke. Having one or more risk factors for stroke can also increase your personal risk. These include having high blood pressure, heart failure, being over the age of 65, having diabetes, a history of vascular disease, being female, a prior stroke, or stroke warnings called a trans ischemic attack or TIA. This is a temporary lack of adequate blood and oxygen supply to the brain. Symptoms are similar to a stroke but usually last a few minutes causing no permanent damage. This is why one of the first things that your doctor will do when he diagnoses you with AF is calculate your risk of stroke. This is done using what is called the CHADS VAS score. For each of the items you see in the table, you receive one point. A zero score is low risk and may not require anticoagulation, and a score of one is low to moderate risk and should consider antiplatelet or anticoagulation. A score of two or greater is moderate to high risk and patients should be considered for anticoagulation. If you would like to know what your CHADS VAS score is, please ask your doctor. I will be discussing medications used to prevent stroke in the medication section of this video. Let's review the signs of stroke. It is important for all of us to know the signs of stroke. If you experience one of these signs, the best action to take is calling 911. Let's review these together. A sudden numbness or weakness of the face, arm or leg, especially one side of the body. Sudden trouble walking, dizziness, loss of balance or coordination. Sudden severe headache with no known cause. Trouble seeing in one or both eyes. Or sudden confusion, trouble speaking or understanding. How can strokes be prevented for people with atrial fibrillation? To prevent blood clots from forming and causing a stroke, your doctor may prescribe a medication called an anticoagulant or commonly referred to as a blood thinner. In actual fact, these medications don't thin your blood, they rather increase the time it takes to form a blood clot. The type of anticoagulant that your doctor selects for you will depend on other medical conditions you have. If you would like to know why you were prescribed a particular anticoagulant, please speak with your doctor. Some people, although this is less commonly the case, will be prescribed an antiplatelet medication for stroke prevention. Antiplatelet medications reduce the ability of platelets in the blood to stick together and form clots. The decision to prescribe an anticoagulant or antiplatelet medication is based on your doctor's assessment of your CHADS VAS score. It is very important that you take these medications as prescribed. Never stop or change them without speaking with your doctor as you are taking them to prevent a stroke. There are two types of anticoagulants that I'm going to discuss now in more detail. The first type, Coumadin, are also called warfarin, requires blood testing to measure your INR. INR stands for International Normalized Ratio, and it is a test that measures how long it takes your blood to clot. It is important to keep your INR within a certain target range, which is determined by your doctor. 
If your INR is too high, you are at risk of developing bleeding problems. If it is too low, you may be at risk of developing blood clots. Based on your INR results, you may be asked to change your dosage of Coumadin. The second type of anticoagulant is called direct oral anticoagulants, and they do not require INR blood testing. Examples of this type of anticoagulant are dibigertrin, rivaroxaban, apixaban, and indoxaban. These type of anticoagulants work by blocking a different but specific clotting protein. Blood work is still required for these medications to check your kidney function on a regular basis. And not everyone is a candidate to use them, these types of anticoagulants. For example, patients who have mechanical valves or severe kidney problems should not be taking them. If you would like to know if you're a candidate for these drugs, please discuss this with your physician. If you're taking Coumadin, it is important to know that some medications can affect your INR, such as antibiotics and amiodarone. Please ensure that all your doctors are aware, and your pharmacist as well too, that you are starting to take Coumadin, and in addition to any new medications. It is also important to understand that some foods can affect your INR as well. Vitamin K, which is found in foods such as green leafy vegetables, may affect your INR. If you eat them, it is important to eat them consistently in the same amounts. In this way, your INR results should not be affected. For more information on what foods can affect your INR, please see the University of Ottawa Heart Institute Anticoagulation Patient Information Booklet. Anticoagulants and even antiplatelet medications can increase your risk for bleeding and bruising. Some things you can do to decrease your risk for bleeding are using a soft toothbrush, using an electric shaver, ensuring that you tell your dentist or any doctor that you're on blood thinners, especially before any type of procedure, avoiding contact sports or activities where injuries are common. If you have a minor cut or bruise, treat it as you normally would, but if the bleeding does not stop, seek medical attention immediately. If you have any signs of major bleeding, you should seek medical attention and go to the nearest emergency department. This includes large amounts of blood in the urine or stool, dark black tarry stool, coughing or vomiting up blood, sudden severe headache or weakness, severe bleeding into the whites of the eyes, or any excessive or continuous bleeding. <laughs>